Welcome back to Patman Garage. So we've got several new things we're putting on Fitty and uh, as well as catching up on my yearly oil change maintenance. Uh, so we're going to do a little shuffling and move wife's car outside into the rain and uh, we'll get Fitty moved over to the center of the garage and that way we can um, get her actually lifted up high enough where we can get underneath it and do what we're hoping to get accomplished. So let's jump into it. So my goal was to get the truck just far enough over where I can get the truck lifted up without running in my storage shelving. And yeah, I bought it out the truck several times as you probably heard. So yeehaw. Uh, but I also wanted to keep it open enough where I could, since I'm gonna be really close to the head of the garage, I wanted to be able to uh, keep an aisle open for people traffic, so and also workspace as well. But that's about where I wanted the truck to sit. Good on all that, we'll get it up in the air now. All right, well, I am sweaty. I'm probably a little more out of shape than I wanted to admit, but uh, got the truck up in the air and I'll take take you a quick tour of what we got set up underneath here and what our plans are uh, once we get this thing, uh, well, once I have more time, probably tomorrow to work on it, but uh, I'm gonna show you what's going on with it here. All right, so I got the front Supported on jack stands, uh, we have some new parts that are going on up front, and got the back supported under jack stand on jack stands, and I have some parts that are coming out back here. So, um, figured I'd go ahead and do all this while I've uh, got it up in the air. Something I've been wanting to do for many years now. Uh, after I redid the rear suspension, and never really got to took the time to cut off the leaf spring hangers or my original shock mounts on the axle so we're going to work on cutting those guys off because we don't need those anymore and it should help lighten up the truck a little bit i say that i still got a full size 20 inch spare under here but so i'm not that concerned about weight but at the same time also can't hurt to take more weight off the truck so uh that's the plan for the back um front is getting some new parts like i talked about and we also may experiment. I've got a, another part in the middle we may experiment with. So stay tuned. I don't know how many videos this is going to end up being, but you know, like I said, I, I wanted to kind of give you a brief overview of what we're looking at. And um, like I said, I'll find out once I edit this what makes sense of appropriate length videos, but should be some exciting stuff uh, for what I can shoot video of. And I probably won't shoot a whole lot of video of grinding, but, you know, I may kind of go a little bit of methodology of what I want to do, how I want to do it. Uh, we'll see about that. And uh, I said, looking forward to some major changes underneath the truck, which should help make this thing a little bit quicker as well. And if you want to continue to speculate, that is one of the new parts we might experiment with. And this is the new parts that are going on the front. So pretty sizable box here. And like I said, we'll see what that looks like in the next video and we'll jump back into working on Fitty finally. So I'm, I'm happy about all that. Oh, almost forgot. Uh, also planning on doing the oil change while I have it in the air. Um, just a few weeks beyond, behind doing my annual oil change on her. So we'll get the oil drained out while we got it up in the air. All right, so this is the Moroso uh, Coyote Swap Mustang uh, oil pan and my custom adapted bracket for it's a MMR oil filter relocation that 
uh, moves the oil filter off of the front of the engine to the back of it, well, anywhere. But I built a bracket that bolts on so I can locate it here. So we'll get the uh, oil drain in here. The other nice thing about this particular uh, pan is the drain plug has a magnet built into the end of it. So we can also, if we had any debris, we could catch it in the pan um, and also less likely to just lose it because it usually sticks right in here. made a little bit of a mess but so this oil has probably about about 2,000 miles on it and uh it's pretty much what i average every year about somewhere around 2,000 miles 1,500 2,000 miles um and it does seem kind of wasteful but at the same time i'm not really gonna let it run for multiple years either that doesn't really seem to make sense either um and oil is pretty cheap in the in the grand scheme of maintenance so I'll let the uh, oil drain and then I'll come back and grab this uh, filter tool to break the filter loose. And as this oil continues to drain, I'll let you take a peek at my adapter bracket I built here. So, um, all right. So, part of it goes uh, up to the block there, where we had a uh, engine mount threaded bolt, and then the other two bolts are going to be straddled up on the oil pan. Um, mounting bolts so it allowed me to tuck it in just the right spot where it was out of the way of what I needed in the front um, and then the uh, you have the AN hoses that go forward uh, to the block side where the oil filter uh, was supposed to live itself um, so the, the adapter hoses are only like four inches or five inches long or something like that um, but like I said it made me Give me just enough space to get out of the way for what I needed it for. So we'll get this, uh, once it finishes dripping here, we'll get this drain plug reinstalled and uh, move on. All right, so we're gonna start putting some oil in this thing here. Get my filter or my funnel out. I do have a special proprietary Matco fancy funnel, but it's not worth cleaning up for a one-time job on something like this. Uh, so it has a bunch of different adapters that actually thread into the valve covers. But anyways, we're going to get this thing full of oil and we can move on to doing some modifications from here. And if you pour the bottle sideways, the air has a clean path to get to the bottom of the bottle as you raise it versus if you do the bottle vertically then it'll slosh and glug 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 as it's pouring out so this is the nice way to pour out smoothly and controlled And that was nine quarts that I put in it. We'll 
run it for a minute or two and we'll check the low level, see if we need to top anything off, but it should be about nine. And also have plans to remove and drain the uh, Ford Performance uh, catch can as well. Uh, so I will work on getting that guy off uh, so we can get it disassembled and get it drained out as well. All right, well, I got the catch can uh, removed. I got my little four screws to hold the lid in place are removed. So we'll see what we got inside here. And I got some oil, some, oil, some moisture, not bad, but... Overall, not bad at all. We'll get this thing uh, wiped out and reassembled. And then reinstalled. All right, and installation is really a breeze. Basically, we just have our two push pins uh, right here that are going to hold our catch can onto the valve cover. There's one. And there's number two. And then our two... Uh, PCV connections just clip back in place. That's it. Super easy. Like I said, I'm super happy with this uh, Ford Performance catch can. It fits in the engine bay really nicely and you wouldn't even really realize it's here. I will uh, continue to update y'all as I go along here, but uh, for now, we will sign off and I appreciate you and I will catch you in the next one.